Hello my friends. Welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new to my channel, hey welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing and if you are back, welcome back. Today I'm here to share a reveal and a post review with all of you. In my post review videos, I like to take the chance to share with you all a completed diamond painting kit and go through some of the things I really loved about it or maybe some challenges that I ran into. And you guys, the one that I have to share with you all today is really, really special to me. I'm excited to get to share it with you. And um, I know you guys were, if you follow me on Instagram, have really been enjoying seeing my, my progress. And I did have a finished reveal over there already as well. Well, so um, this may look familiar, but this was a really special um, project to work on in particular because this was actually my 100th completed diamond painting kit. I decided that I wanted this particular finish to be as epic in scale, to, or as meaningful to me at least, <laughs> as uh, this milestone felt. And so I took some time to really consider. Um, I had my Patreon help me decide. They got to vote on a couple of my top choices. <laughs> and then ultimately just kind of did go with my gut, which happened to align with what they voted on. Uh, but this was a kit that I had searched for for a while. I truly didn't think that I would ever find it because it's it was discontinued a few years ago. It's incredibly difficult to come by, but with the help of a friend who helped me track it down, um, I was absolutely thrilled to add this to my collection because it has one of my very, 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 very favorite princesses in it. And so I was just so happy from the moment I started working on it. Instead of continuing to leave you in suspense, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this particular kit. Now, it's not all going to fit in frame <laughs> because this is one of the absolutely stunning panels from Mandy Manzano and Diamond Art Club. <laughs> you guys, this is tall, <laughs> but she is an absolute beauty. I cannot get over how gorgeous this is and how epic this is. I'm going to insert a picture here for you guys so you can see the entire panel in all her glory. Um, this is just, it makes my heart so happy even just looking at her. So to give you a really quick breakdown of the, the stats and the info about this kit. So it is 42 by 125 centimeters. So that's kind of the standard size for Mandy Manzano's panels. Um, it has 47 colors, including a total of, let's see, three ABs and has square drills. And I think that this one was released in 2019. I think. Um, it was discontinued, I think before 2020, because it was before I started diamond painting. Um, and it... It definitely has some of like the hallmarks of some of Diamond Art Clubs. I call them like their OG kits. They're older kits um, where, especially with the square drills, some of them are a little bit finicky. Uh, there's a little bit of a variety in terms of uh, the the material and the shape a little bit, though this actually was, was not difficult to work with. Um, their, their original canvas backing feels just a little bit different than um, then, you know, they're more like present day canvas backing, uh, but it's a really similar material. This just has a different like sort of texture. It's hyper soft. Like it's so, 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 so soft and plush. The glue feels about the same. It's still poured glue and I had no issues whatsoever with this glue, even though this was a three year old kit three plus year old kit. Uh, the drill field, a lot of the symbols are, are symbols that we still see Diamond Art Club using today. So I don't really know that that has changed. You know, the branding is the same and um, the quality across the board, I feel like is still extremely, extremely high. Um, even back then, Diamond Art Club was making some of the most high quality canvases out there. 
one of the noticeable differences you might you might see is maybe in the rendering style um, this particular kit and a lot of these older princess panels I feel like sometimes get flack for how the skin tones are rendered you can see here that you know there's quite a lot of like contrast it almost maybe looks splotchy but you guys I, I think maybe what some people might miss in, in translation um, when they look at these is it's it's really designed to emulate very very closely the original artwork for this piece which is very much it has a stained glass effect and that stained glass look and vibe is really consistent throughout the entire piece it's not just in her skin you can see it in her in her tail even like the flowers down here and the plants it's and the water in the background um we've got that stained glass vibe throughout the entire thing even in her hair so especially when i step back and look at th this through more of a viewing distance from more of a viewing distance i actually think it looks incredibly beautiful and very very true to mandy manzano's original artwork but i i would be curious if if this were in the hands of Diamond Art Club's current rendering team, what they might have done, what they might have done differently. I actually really enjoy how her face is rendered. I think that like her eyelashes are really pretty. Um, she's got a lot of contour going on here, uh, but I think it looks really beautiful, especially like I said, when you pull back, I think her mouth is rendered really beautifully. Um, there's some ABs in here actually. The white AB is pretty sparing in this kit, but there is some here in her, in her teeth. Um, there's a little bit of the white AB here in the white lines on her arms. But like I said, that white AB is really few and far between. It is in the center of the flowers here at the very bottom as well. And you can see as well the orange ABs. This is actually a good spot. I'm going to show you guys. You heard me mention about how um, I felt like there were some different like drill materials. Now, I want to preface this by saying... I am not an expert. This is just me working with a diamond painting and going, oh, I'm noticing, you know, some of these different, these drills feel and or look different to work with. So I, this is not me speaking for Diamond Art Club or as any kind of expert. But for example, like if you look at even how these orange drills like this color, like how they look, there's like this slight gapping, almost like it's a little bit wider at the bottom than it is at the top versus how closely these orange drills or these orange drills, how closely in uniform those sit up against each other. Um, that was something I ran into with a few different colors in this kit is like some were this, which in my mind, this is the higher quality, you know, really consistent in size and sit snugly up against each other. And these, which it's like, no matter how perfectly I place them, it's it's like the bottoms are just a little bit wider than the top. And so you're always going to get that visual gap look when you're up close like this. I'll show you there was some in the skin tones as well. But I just wanted to point out that there was that difference. Um, thankfully, the drills were not generally difficult to work with, even though I noticed those differences and kind of maybe the drills themselves. So like some colors look like maybe they, I don't know, they just looked different than others. Um, there was still actually not too much in the way of trash. I didn't really have issues with the, the 310, which is what I was honestly most nervous about. Uh, there was some trash, but honestly, there are, are present day companies that their black drills are much, much worse <laughs> than these were. So um, I was thankful to not have issues with these. <laughs> um, if you look, here's a good spot like in her skin tone. Or actually, let me bring you down. That'll be easier than pulling. you. So here's a spot where you can really see again, there's almost like this visual separation between these drills, both of these colors. But then some of these colors do sit up a little bit more snugly to one another. Actually, there's a lot in here that <laughs> kind of sit further apart, but then you get up and even like the black doesn't have as bad a gapping and like this purple is nice and stuff like that. So you've got that going on. And then let me show you a few other different areas. Here is the blue AB that was in this kit. And you guys, I actually really enjoyed working with this AB. Um, I was showing it to a couple of fellow like seasoned diamond painters and being like, don't these blue ABs almost look different? Like the coating and how they were done almost looks different 
from the the ABs that Diamond Art Club puts out now, and it was interesting. And I was like, I almost kind of prefer working with with these blue ABs in some ways. But the blue ABs were just like in the in the water in the background, and I thought were a pretty a pretty addition because you know water can kind of shimmer like that. Um, and then we had some of these white ABs, like I mentioned, we have them in her mouth, and here's her really pretty. I like her eyelashes, like I said, and then her hair. You guys, her hair was on fire. I loved it. Uh, this is where the um, most of the orange AB would be found. Uh, there was some of the orange AB when we were just looking at the very bottom at those flowers again, but most of it is definitely in her hair and I thought was a really, really fun addition. I love the color blending in her hair. It just, I feel like it suited her so well and I, I really really enjoyed how they did that um, and I did have leftovers in all of these ABs and all the colors actually which let me take you back out and I'll show you I'll show you the drills that I have left over so I did have plenty left over in all of the colors don't mind the random trash that I let accumulate here in the bottom corner but there's all the diamonds. There's those blue ABs that I was talking about that I was like, oh, I kind of like how those are. I did have some static in some of my drills. So um, I've always said that static, I feel like is pretty weather dependent. Um, but yeah, so it was a really fun color spread, interestingly enough. And this, how, how they had done like the legend and the color list down here, for some reason, we did have these first two ABs at the top, like numbers one and two. But then this last AB was at the end of the list, like number 47. And I was very confused at first, but I ended up just, because visually, I, and I don't know myself, I just expect uh, the ABs to all be together here at the top. So I just put these in DMC order rather than, you know, this number order. So anyway, um, I don't know that I'll necessarily be saving these diamonds because, except for the ABs, uh, because they were a little bit like less, less high quality than I've come to expect from like present day Diamond Art Club. They've made so many improvements with their square drills that it's like, I don't, I don't need to save those when I already know that I can have some much, much, much better quality um, materials and just like whatever molds they're using now, whatever their process is now, I much prefer their the square drills that they have today versus what they used when they made this kit three years ago. <laughs> uh, so all in all, I have to say that as nervous as I was about pulling out and working on um, an older kit and just what I feel like I had heard um, from other people about just like, oh, those were just difficult to work on. And um, like I know Lindsay at Emeralds and Fairy Lights recently completed one of her unicorn princess panels. She did the Lost Princess. Um, and she actually went through the whole process of, <clears throat> she bought extra kits, not of that kit, but like extra of like present day kits so that she could swap in all new drills from Diamond Art Club's new drills. Um, I didn't really have the patience for that. And I thought, I'm just gonna give this a try. Like I just had this weird idea in my head of like, I want the experience of working on this kit to just sort of, it was gonna feel like more nostalgic and meaningful to me to like just work on it as is. I'm weird though, <laughs> so it's, I don't know if you think that that's strange or not, but that's what I ultimately decided to do. And honestly, I enjoyed working on it as it is. Uh, so you guys, I know that a lot of these, these Mandy Manzano princess panels, most of them, I think nearly all of them have been retired. You can still find, I think, um, Make a Wish, Take a Bite, and The Beast, I think are the two panels that are still available on Diamond Art Club's website. Um, I know that these older panels are often like really highly sought after, and I wish um, that I had enough of this like exact one <laughs> to share with you all. Um, I do have a, hopefully what's a helpful alternative suggestion for you guys. If you haven't heard um, myself or anyone else share about it before, but there is actually a company that has legally licensed the cross stitch patterns for many of Mandy Manzano's panels, including this one, I believe. And that shop is creatively stitching over on Etsy. And so you can actually purchase the cross stitch chart and convert it to a diamond painting on a blank canvas. Um, I have a playlist uh, for a project that I have worked on 
as far as converting a cross stitch pattern to a diamond painting that I'll link below if you want to go and take a look. Um, but you can buy the pattern from Creative Lace Stitching and then you'll need to buy your materials elsewhere. I would recommend taking a look at Jada Gem Shop. She practically specializes in doing um, these these material packs basically the canvas and the drills for um, these creatively stitching panels because they're so popular um, she has like a package art it's all like kind of pre-packaged on her website and so I'll link to that below if you have any questions whatsoever the owner of Jaded Gem Shop's name is Jade and she's incredibly helpful and very very sweet and I'm sure she'd be more than happy to help her materials are really really high quality you're gonna get like top-notch quality resin squares to work with and a poured glue canvas and it's gonna turn out looking I think pretty close to this you know it's not going to be the same charting as Diamond Art Club but it's still based on the same original artwork and can still I hope be a good alternative if you're like I really adore this artwork and badly want to work on it as a diamond painting I definitely suggest looking into that as an option so anyway you guys thanks for joining me for this post review I hope that if nothing else it was still fun to get to see um, this kit completed because I, I don't know that I've seen like pictures or, or post reviews of it completed before. And so I thought it would just be fun to share it with you guys and also just to selfishly take a moment to celebrate this, this milestone of 100 completed diamond painting kits. So um, one of these days I may even do a video where I just kind of do a flip through of all of the first 100 diamond painting kits that I've completed. You know what? Here's to 100 more. <laughs> so um, if you want to stay on this journey with me or join me on this journey if you're not on it with me already and see me work on these next 100 diamond painting kits over the next however many years, months it takes, feel free to subscribe. You can hit the button just down here and there's also a bell you can hit to be notified when I share new videos. But yeah, I'd love to have you have you join me on this, on this fun crafting journey. So <laughs> thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up on your way out, I would super appreciate it but otherwise I'm gonna go ahead and let you go thanks so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day I'll chat with you in the next one bye mm -hmm.